Well, with only one week in between the SNEC trade show in Shanghai and Intersolar, the Smarter E 2024 here in Munich, it's only the truly uh, loyal subjects of the solar world who are willing to attend both of these shows, traverse the globe. Jenny Chase is an analyst with Bloomberg NEF, and she actually took on the challenge this year. Um, Jenny, what can you tell me about the mood in Shanghai at the uh, SNEC among the manufacturers? So it's pretty muted this year. I mean, if you think about this time last year, module prices were over 20 cents a watt still. Um, things were looking great. They booked huge booths for this year. And now modules are below 11 cents a watt. And a lot of these guys are not going to be there next year. Well, and the polysilicon makers in particular, the price is incredibly low. This is like unheard of before. Um, how, how are they faring? So the poly exactly, the polysilicon price has never been below $5 a kilogram before. Um, and basically that is below the cost of production for a lot of these companies. But the thing is that they have huge war chests of money that they built up in 2022 and 2023. And it, the first one to shut down loses. So while they're scheduling some maintenance at polysilicon factories to cut production and, and obviously get the maintenance out of the way, they're not making massive cuts. They're playing in this game of chicken where they're using their war chests to, to keep serving their customers, keep their customers so that when times pick up, they'll still be there. Okay, when times pick up, I think that's probably a bit of a key question in the industry. So production capacity more or less is, is around one terawatt. Demand is well short of that. How big is this delta, Jenny? So we think that there's enough polysilicon to easily make 1.1 terawatts of solar modules this year. And we expect global installation to be 585 gigawatts this year. So that is a pretty huge de delta. That's 400 gigawatts of extra modules just kicking around. So and, and, I, and it's a bit of an old adage amongst analysts. I understand that you can always predict consolidation and at one point you'll be right. But when do you expect actual consolidation to begin to happen amongst the manufacturing segment in solar? I think, it's, I think in the next year, some of these guys are going to go bankrupt. Um, and some of them will break up. So there will be a bit of fragmentation too. I think that ultimately there will never be a terawatt of solar installation in a year, at least according to our modeling, which could be wrong because you can always bring demand forward a bit. And, but there is simply a massive overcapacity and things are going to have to rationalize a little bit. Now, I, I have to pick up on that, 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 you know, it's been a goal of the modern solar industry to reach this terawatt age. Um, you're saying from Bloomberg NEF standpoint, that's just not going to happen. I know that I'm going to be proven, probably going to be proven wrong on this, but there isn't much. Here's the thing. We actually have quite a lot of solar now. Um, at the end of 2022, total world power capacity, all sources, was 8.5 terawatts. So that tells you something about the total market that exists. Now, obviously, that's we're going to need more electricity in future because we're going to electrify everything. We're going to... Um, to electrify transport and hopefully will increase electricity demand in Africa and uh, Southeast Asia and give everyone more. But just for, the re for reference, our forecast for 2030 has 6.7 gigawatts of just solar capacity. So that's already getting to the point where in sunny hours, you've got solar covering all your demand. You've got zero power prices and you start getting negative feedback mechanisms at that level. Even when you're building a lot of batteries as well, you start to get to the point where if you add more solar, it doesn't actually help that much, at least locally. And so I think that we will get to close to a terawatt being installed every year, but we are starting to get to the point where actually we have so much solar, we have to think a bit about where the next bit of solar wants to go, and it doesn't make sense everywhere. Okay, I'm sure that's a message that the manufacturing segment um, won't be too pleased to hear. It's going to be a rough time ahead. There, there, are you in anticipating some kind of uptick uh, where, with demand heading beyond 600 towards 700, if not a terawatt? Oh, yes. I mean, we get to our forecast gets eight, 880 gigawatts a year by 2030. So we get pretty close. And, you know, we could pull some of that demand forward and, and actually we could do a terawatt in a year but we will have those negative feedback mechanisms. Um, I just don't think it will actually, it, pulling that demand forward will save all of these manufacturers. 
Okay, well, it's going to be another wild ride, if not perhaps a bloodbath, as Jenny anticipated in 2023. Jenny Chase from Bloomberg NEF here at the Smarter E Europe 2024. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching.